Welcome. I'm so glad we're able to worship together today on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We are continuing our sermon series on Christmas traditions, and today we're talking about Christmas stockings. Now, although it is the fourth Sunday of Advent, it is also Christmas Eve. So that I hope that you will join us in our live stream of our 7 p.m. carols and candlelight service. That will be up for the next several days. So I hope you are able to join us either in person or online. Now, as we get ready to worship our Lord, let us prepare our hearts and our minds. Today is the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. Advent means coming, and in this season we prepare for the coming of Christ. We light the candles on the Advent wreath to remind us of the blessings that Christ brings to the world. Today we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. God's love is priceless and unconditional. As we light this candle, we call for God's love to fill our lives, and we pray. Lord, may we stay aware of the love you have for us. Inspire us to find you in the everyday moments and come with hearts of gratitude to your manger on Christmas. Amen. Let us pray. God of love and mercy, thank you for your great gift of your child, Jesus Christ, who fills us with all that we need. Merciful God, we are fully aware that not all your children are able to bask in joy or peace during this season. We pray for peace within all walls, walls within our own homes, walls that surround each city and town. We pray that during the season of Advent, we may usher your promise of salvation into our lives and that we may share the good news of our Savior with others. We pray that the promise of your birth may be the promise that we live in and share at home, at work, and at school. May we be moved to compassion and action in your name. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The legend of hanging Christmas stockings may be most familiar from the words of Clement Clark Moore's classic poem which says the stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. But hanging Christmas stockings is one of the oldest traditions. Even though this tradition originated not as part of a Christmas celebration of Christ's birth, but rather as a tribute to a priest. Christmas stockings today are often quite large and are rarely worn in public. The legend of the stocking was born out of a mundane but ne necessarily nightly ritual dating back to thousands of years ago. Many families only had one set of clothing which had to be washed daily, especially socks and stockings. And these stockings were hung by the fire each night to dry. Only the wealthy had closets full of clothes and more than one pair of socks or stockings. Then during the fourth century, a priest named Nicholas ministered to poor families throughout his hometown of Patara 
in the area around Bari, which is now Turkey. This priest was born into a wealthy family, but he was called to serve those living in poverty. God called him to bless those who needed help in basic living necessities. He was a very charitable man. And he was particularly prone to making sure children had their needs fulfilled. One year, during his stay in a small town, Nicholas heard of a man and his three teenage daughters who were starving to near the point of death. The man had reached a horrific decision. He had to sell one of his daughters into slavery in order that the other two girls would have a dowry. For without a dowry, they could never marry and escape living in abject poverty. But when the time came, this man could not sell his daughter. So he kept his family together, knowing his daughters would live harsh and difficult lives. One evening, the family hung their stockings by the fire to dry. After the girls and their father went to sleep, Nicholas opened a window and dropped a golden coin into the oldest daughter's stocking. The father raised his head to heaven and thanked the Lord for the life-saving gift. This became her dowry. The same thing happened for each daughter as the years passed. Now the news of these magical coins in the stocking soon spread throughout the village. Most people believed that this was a gift that came straight from God. Though some took note that these things happened only when this beloved special priest was in town. It was indeed the beloved priest who made the quiet nighttime visits to leave blessings in stockings. Many people began looking into their stockings when the special man came to town. And after the man passed away, a day of Saint Nicholas was observed by the church. It almost always happened that on the morning of Saint Nicholas Day, Gifts were found in the stockings by the fire. Years later, Moore's poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, or The Night Before Christmas, which is now what it was called, it was written knowing that St. Nicholas Day was not celebrated in Christmas. In knowing that St. Nicholas Day was not celebrated in America. Thus, the hanging of the stockings was solidified as a Christmas tradition. Today, the stockings are often filled with candy or small toys. Some include oranges, which represent the gold coin placed in the original stockings. It is important, however, to remember that this tradition began as a gracious gift from a man of God. This is not unlike the story of the shepherds outside of Bethlehem. These shepherds were very low in the caste system of the time. They were looked down upon. They were marginalized. They were overlooked by many. Where once shepherding was a revered job, by Jesus' day, shepherds were outcasts and seen as substandard. Yet it was they who received the message of God's gracious gift. It was the shepherds who had the privilege of hearing the angel's message, seeing the sky light up and ring with the angel chorus, and being the first to kneel before the Christ child. Their lowly state was deemed worthy of God's grace and loving gift of a Savior, Christ the King. Just as that poor, starving family years ago who received a loving gift from a priest, a gift which saved their lives, so the shepherds received the news of a gift that would save their lives and the lives of all people to come. The Christ child is, yes, indeed, a gift to save our lives. He came for us. He was God in human form. He was here to live perfectly and to die as the final sacrificial lamb. 
He gave himself for us, arose from the grave for us, and now we trust and believe that we too will rise to live eternally with our God. Sure, many of us will hang our stockings with hope of special gifts, but we must remember that the most special gift is the gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. And all of God's hope-filled children said, Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.